This is the story of Herman, the littlest locomotive in the roundhouse. The roof of his cab barely came up to the windows of the big engine, and from coal car to cow catcher, he was just about one-third as long as they were. However, across the front, or chest, as you might say, he was just as broad as any of the big fellows, for his little wheels had to run along the same size track that they did. From early morning until late at night, Herman puffed and snorted, pulling the passenger coaches from one spot to another and giving them a jolly good bump so they would couple up and be ready for their travels. Day after day, Herman stood to one side and watched the big locomotives haul the coaches away to strange romantic places. In spite of himself, he always felt just a little bit wistful when a big locomotive would fasten onto the cars and roll away without him. Sometimes he would stand and sigh after the passenger train until the observation car was out of sight and the last wisp of white smoke had dissolved into the blue sky. And then he would go back to his work. Don't think for a moment that Herman didn't like his job. He really did. And he would have been very happy if it hadn't been for just one thing. The big locomotives were rude to Herman. That isn't a very nice thing to say, but it was the honest truth. You see, he was so small, and the big locomotives were all so great and powerful that they just looked down their smokestacks at him. If they spoke to him at all, it was to tease him, and they called him names that hurt his pride. They called him Little Herman, or Little Puff Puff, or Baby. Sometimes they even called him Papa's Pet, because Papa was a little man in the blue overalls who came around every day with the big brass oil can. He looked after all the locomotives, squirting a little oil here and there when they needed it, and brushing them gently with a bit of waste when they were hot and perspirationy. But Papa was especially fond of Herman, and always treated him as though he were a big locomotive. One day, when Papa was giving Herman a going over, he paused and scratched his chin with the spout of the oil can and said, Herman, my boy, I've been thinking a lot about you lately. You're a good little locomotive, and you ought to be given a nice reward. Now, if you were one of the big fellows on the main line, I might get you a nice new observation car or one of those beautiful diners that smell like a pastry shop. But since you're only a little switch engine, I don't know what to do for you. Tonight, I'm going to talk it over with my wife because she's a very wise woman. And tomorrow, I'll bring you whatever present she thinks you ought to have. All that night, Herman could hardly sleep for thinking about his presence. It might be a whistle that went true, true, instead of woo-woo, as his whistle did. Anyhow, he just knew it would be something so magnificent that all the big locomotives would want to be his friend, and they most assuredly would stop teasing him. He played with his pleasant thought until he fell sound asleep and dreamed a most beautiful dream in which the railroad company printed a new timetable, and right smack on the front cover there was a colored picture of Herman rushing up the main line with his best wheel forward and a long streamer of the purest white smoke trailing from his smokestack. It was a lovely dream, but it ended abruptly, for Herman was rudely awakened by the sound of hammering. Herman yawned and opened his headlights, and there was Papa right beside him, hammering away for all that he was worth. There you are, Herman, said Papa. There's your present. Two of the nicest little blue window boxes that money can buy. One for your right cab window and one for your left. And they're both filled with the brightest red geraniums that my wife had in her garden. Herman was mortified. Gone were all his beautiful dreams of being friends with the big fellows because no self-respecting locomotive could afford to be seen going about with a bunch of bright red geraniums bouncing up and down on either side of his cab. He wanted to blush, but he didn't know how. Come on, Herman, said Papa. You've got to get number six ready to go to Albany. And if I do say so, you're handsome enough to make the trip yourself. Ha, ha, Herman panted feebly, trying to pretend that he didn't feel so well. But ha, ha, 
and his wheels began to turn, rolling him right out of his stall and out into the yard. As he passed the big locomotives, he said, Woo-woo! very faintly, hoping that they wouldn't notice him. But notice him they did. Instead of answering with a good big toot, toot, according to the company rules, they tightened up on their whistles and mimicked him by saying, Woo-woo-woo, right back at him. He just knew that they were laughing at him inside their boilers, and the shame that he felt was almost more than he could stand. I won't stand for it, Herman muttered to himself as he butted a ladylike lounge car into her proper place. I won't, and he snapped at an elderly smoking car and whirled it down the track. I positively will not, and he bumped a whole string of coaches so they coupled up for the trip to Albany. All day long, Herman behaved very badly. He went about his work so viciously that he almost shook the very life out of those poor red geraniums. He made so many mistakes and did everything in such a slipshod manner that everyone became annoyed with him, even Papa. Papa was really so annoyed that when the day's work was finished, he banged out of the roundhouse without even saying good night, and worse than that, without remembering to lock the doors behind him. That always happens when people become impatient and lose their tempers. They are so busy being angry that they haven't time to remember the pleasant or the important things. Herman sat in his stall and brooded. The more he brooded, the madder he got, and the madder he got, the hotter became the fire beneath his boiler. By the time the big locomotives were snoring peacefully, Herman's steam gauge was almost to the bursting point. I know what I'll do, he said savagely. I'll sneak out and take these geraniums for such a ride that they'll never get over it. I'll go so far that I won't ever have to bother about coming back. That's exactly what I'll do. Very quietly, he began to move forward. He slipped to the door. He opened it. He crossed the yard and lickety split. He rattled off and into the quiet night. The air was cool and the shiny steel of the track seemed cold and hard. He went clickety-clack and presently his wheels began to sing a little song which Herman helped along by whistling. It went clickety-clack, clickety-clack. And the whistling part made Herman feel ever so much better. Papa would have called it whistling in the dark, for that is exactly what people do when they're up to something that they shouldn't be. Herman was rushing along at a terrific rate when he saw a tall, willowy water tower looming up ahead of him. Woo-woo! called Herman in his most official voice, just to let her know that he was going to pass right by without stopping. Woo-woo! What did you say? called the water tower. I said, woo-woo! cried Herman. Oh, said the water tower. She knew perfectly well what Herman had said, but she was a very flattering water tower who spent all of her time gushing over locomotives in a most insincere manner. Oh, she said, I thought you said, toot, toot. Did you really, asked Herman. He was delighted to be mistaken for a big locomotive. Yes, I could have sworn that you said, toot, toot. Well... Maybe I did, said Herman, and he slowed down to a standstill beside us. You know how it is with us big locomotives. When we're going somewhere, we really can't stop to think what we're saying. No, of course you can't, she said in her gushy way. I don't believe I've seen you before. Aren't you new on this road? Well, yes and no, said Herman importantly. I've been with the company for quite some time, but I just haven't been out this way before. I do very special work, if you understand. Rather secret work, I might say, and, well, I'd just rather not talk about it, if if you don't mind. Herman was so shocked to hear himself telling such a monstrous big fib that he just couldn't go on with it. The water tower gushed, of course, I don't mind. Far be it from me to cry into other people's business. My, what beautiful geraniums. Oh, uh, those, said Herman, uh, they were sort of a, a present from, from, I know, she said, a present from the railroad on account of doing your secret work so well. Yes, uh, that's it, he said, and this time he really did blush, straight from the grate in his firebox for telling such a fib. 
present indeed, jeered the Willoughby Water Tower. You silly little switch engine. You're blushing just as red as your own red geranium and redder than the little red hand car that passes here each day. You're blushing because you're fibbing, and you're fibbing because you're nobody at all. Nobody but Herman, the littlest locomotive in the roundhouse. I know all about you. You've been naughty, and you're running away. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I'm not ashamed of myself, and I am running away, Herman cried noisily, because he really was ashamed. And you just try to stop me. All right, little Puff Puff, I will, she said. And before Herman could turn a wheel, she sprayed him properly from coal car to cow catcher. Woo-woo, cried Herman as the cold water hit his boiler. Woo-woo, he squealed as it splashed into his firebox. Sang the flaming coals and died right out so that Herman was powerless to move. With his last of steam, he murmured a melancholy, and gave up all hope of escaping. With the cold gray light of dawn, Papa arrived with one of the big locomotives and hauled Herman home, hind wheels foremost, which was most undignified. Herman was put into the darkest corner of the roundhouse, if you can imagine such a thing, and there he stayed quite miserably until his little inside dried out. Finally, Papa came around with a big brass oil can. He patted Herman on the boiler and spoke very kindly. Well, old timer, he said, I don't know what got into you. You were certainly naughty, but I'm not going to mention that. No, sir. We'll just let bygones be bygones. I gave you those nice blue window boxes with bright red geraniums to show how much I appreciate you. And I meant it. You don't know what a terrible time we had without you this morning. Why, those big locomotives couldn't even move without you. And don't you think they didn't know it, too? There was no Herman to fetch them their cars, and they'd have given anything to see you come dancing up the track with your red geraniums waving. Toot, toot, that's right, Herman, said the biggest locomotive. We're happy to have you back, geraniums and all. Woo-woo, whistled Herman, and back he went to work puffing and snorting and puttering around the big railroad yard as happy as could be. And how about the window boxes and the geraniums? Why, Herman likes them fine. In fact, he likes them so much that he's thinking about wearing window curtains.